Now, I always try to uh, explain that to people, like, right off, you know, from the beginning, that they're going to have to work hard at it because music is not an easy thing to do. And what we find is that the people that work hard at it is the ones that are able to survive it. Multi-instrumentalist, composer Roscoe Mitchell commenting on the realities of surviving and succeeding as a creative musician. Welcome back to Jazz Alive. I'm Max Roach inviting you to stay with us as we continue with more highlights from the Creative Arts Collective's series of jazz concerts featuring outstanding artists in the field, like the gentleman to whom we are about to turn, Roscoe Mitchell. Mitchell is a charter member of the AACM. Before there was an art ensemble of Chicago with whom Mitchell is proud to remain as an active member, there was a Roscoe Mitchell Art Quartet. He was among the first of the current group of saxophonists to seriously address the challenges of solo saxophone performance. Although his work is distinctive for its textures, voicings, interval relationships, and his use of space, Mitchell's overriding concern is the investigation and mastery of all manner of improvisational procedure. His past collaborators, Anthony Braxton, Muhal Richard Abrams, Leo Smith, Joe Jarman, Lester Bowie, Henry Threadgill, read like a who's who of the contemporary scene. This performance introduces Mitchell's new group, the Roscoe Mitchell Sound Ensemble. But before we hear them perform, let's visit with Mitchell and writer musicologist Ben Sidron as they discuss the ensemble and Mitchell's work with the CAC. Uh, when you're in a situation uh, as you were with the CAC and the uh, performances at the Institute in Detroit where you come in with your music and you're uh, given a, a matter of days I suppose to rehearse it and to pull the performance off how do you go about organizing that experience? Well see working with the CAC has not been that difficult for me because we started getting together I think uh, back in 1973 and um, when I first met these guys, uh, they were most of them in college. And uh, we decided that East Lansing was going to be a place that we were going to develop into uh, sort of a musical center, you know, uh, similar to the way that we had done with the AACM in Chicago. And what we wanted to do was uh, uh, establish a place where we could have the music, you know, concerts of our own, and then have an exchange program going on, like with the, uh, we started off with just AACM members uh, in Chicago because they were close and easier to bring up, and then we expanded to bringing people from, you know, wherever they were, New York or, or whatever like that. So uh, uh, the guy that composed up this quintet uh, sound um, well Spencer and I have been like getting together since like 1973 and uh, Jeribu and uh, Tani Tabal they're actually active working in the, in the Detroit area for some years now uh, Hugh Reagan I first met at a intensive uh, session that we were doing at the Woodstock Creative uh, Music School and uh, he was also in a, a large band thing that I did in, uh, in Europe uh, a couple of summers, summers ago. The sound ensemble, I guess, is the outgrowth now of the concerts in Detroit. Yeah, it's, um, it's the outgrowth of, um, of a working quintet that I've put together, you know, for touring. How, how, how will the operation of the sound ensemble, both as a touring group and as a musical group, differ from the art ensemble? Well, uh, it's not that, that, I mean, I think that, like, uh, the uh, musical uh, values and things that I learned, you know, like from the ACM and the art ensemble and, and this, that, and the other as I go along, I think what I do is just carry those over. A lot of things that uh, uh, we worked out with the art ensemble and we found that they worked and we just carry those over uh, with the sound ensemble and uh, we use that as a, as a base. It's like sort of when... Uh, we put together the CAC based on the way the AECM was set up. Roscoe Mitchell with Ben Sidron. Why don't we listen to some of the results of Roscoe's work in Detroit as he and the ensemble perform Anthony Braxton's March?
I bet John Philip Sousa never dreamt marches would ever sound like that. The spirit of James Reese Europe lives on. Again, here's Mitchell with Ben Sidron. Has uh, Anthony's uh, compositional uh, direction affected you at all? Well, I would say yes, because uh, I think that like all of us growing up in Chicago, we've all been like affected by each other, you know, that is... Um, Moo Hall would do something and everybody would run over in the corner and try to get that together, you know, and then uh, Anthony would do something and everybody would try to get that together. I'd do something or Joseph or Thread Gill, you know. That's what was good about my uh, coming up in Chicago. We had such a rich musical scene going on, a lot of good minds there. So that, like, uh, if you were stuck with something or having a problem, you could always go to somebody and find the answer for that or at least another point of view for that particular problem. Uh, the the regional the the plight of the local musician today is uh uh it's a lot different than it used to be it seems to me in in, in the old days uh, somebody in a in a place like detroit would uh, uh polish up his uh, chops and get to new york as fast as he could to, to do battle with uh, uh with the people there uh, today uh, th that may not be the case people in detroit may be more interested in making it happen in detroit as they are in every city and yeah i think that's that's largely attributed to like the work that the aecm done in 1964 i mean the aecm was like an organization that proved that you know you could like develop a musical scene wherever you were because we've always known that like you don't have to go to new york to hear a good musician i mean there's good musicians all over the world i mean you know and a lot of guys just really don't even care to travel you know i think one good thing that has has happened you know uh over the years is uh over the last few years is that like uh the the more interest that the national endowment for the arts and different uh arts organizations has have uh you know taken more interest in these groups and are helping to sustain these musicians right in their home and like that makes for a very rich musical scene right for the community that's right there because a lot of people that are are in detroit for instance may not be able to travel all around to hear music and stuff like that so i think that like this way it's it's, it's really much better because that way you you get you come up with a good musical scene everywhere and then that that makes for a good exchange program i mean like people can go from one place to another to play some music and those people that are there can come to where the other person came from and then that keeps the music scene fresh because the people uh reap the benefits of that i mean because they get a chance to hear all oh, these people right at home and that's a that's a really good thing they also talked about the next piece on the program entitled round yeah, now that's a composition that, well, you were speaking about being influenced by different people. Now, Leo Smith influenced me for writing this composition. We did a duet concert in, um, in Pisa, I think it was, Pisa, Italy. And uh, it was, I was just amazed by the way he had taken the material for a round and put that together as a duet piece of music, you know. So that, like, I had to try to do something, you know, to... Uh, to fill in that gap for myself, let's say. So I wrote that piece of music and dedicated it to Leo Smith. And actually, it started out being a piece for uh, tenor, saxophone, and flugelhorn. And then when we started to work that in with the sound ensemble, we added the rhythm section onto that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
The third composition is sip, six cards, and the cards are movable, so that like each time that they're moved around, you produce a different set of musical atmospheres that you're dealing with, and uh, depending on how you, d you shuffle your cards around, that is, you get a different musical sound, and the more players you add to this element, the more variety of sounds that you have. I used it once in a composition seminar when I was uh, teaching down at the... University of Champaign Circle, uh, not Circle Campus, but uh, Champaign, Illinois. And uh, we, we put together a group of musicians and we showed that, like, we played two versions of the same uh, same hand, let's say, of, of the CYP composition. And we, we seen then that it was different, and then we reshuffled them and come up with another complete different situation in music.
Sturdy McGurdy in her dancing shoes. That's Sturdy like McGurdy. a composition that's uh, dedicated to my daughter. Uh, we had an experience once where uh, we wanted to buy her some shoes and she didn't want any shoes, so we made up a little story about it and then I put it to music and uh, this is what uh, this is what we came up with. Tangentially, uh, do you? Uh, I don't know how old your daughter is, but uh, do, do you spend a lot of time uh, with her and or her friends? And do you uh, consciously? Uh, do children's music occasionally? Sure, I certainly do because uh, she's a very uh, important part of my life, and of course she influences me a lot. You know, I, I really listen to her. She's very bright, and um, I've got a few songs that I've done for her. There's another one called "Song for the Little Feet" and different things like that. Just different impressions that uh, uh, children make on you, on your mind. You know, later on you find that they can be transferred into a musical situation.
you think there might be a, a, a way, a curriculum that might be developed out of uh, your approach to music that could uh, not be used uh, uh, instead of uh, standard ways of mastering instruments, but uh, in parallel, too, to teach young people music? Yeah, well, I would definitely hope that would be what would happen because like that's what I'm about right now in my life is documenting a lot of the different approaches and different compositions and different things that I've done you know uh, so that like these things will be around for uh, younger musicians to study you know and to uh, to learn from uh, the final composition uh, is song now uh, song is a, a composition that is a part of a uh, it's part of another composition which is back to the influence thing like Joseph Rose once wrote this uh, composition called Erica and this composition I spent a lot of time doing it I've recorded it a few times this composition uh, was so beautiful to me that I had to try to attempt to write something like that or similar in that particular bag let's say so I came up with the composition Sing and uh, from the composition sing came song so like what it actually is is like the sing part is in a minor and the song part is in in c sort of so uh you can like either run them together or use them as separate uh compositions you know <laughs> Guitars, Mr. A. Spencer Bearfield. Yeah. On drums, Mr. Tiny Tabo. This is Rebu Shahid.
the Roscoe Mitchell Sound Ensemble. Roscoe Mitchell on saxophones, Spencer Badfield on guitar, Hugh Reagan on trumpet, Jaribu Shahid on bass, Tani Tabal on drums, in performance at the Recital Hall in the Detroit Institute of Art.